this evening. I want you to open your mouth and your spirit and begin to connect, begin to speak in tongues this evening, even as we begin to prepare ourselves to receive from him. Open yourself, open yourself, open your mouth this evening. He's here, he's here, he's here to bless you tonight. Put your hands together for him, not me, for him. This evening we want to thank God for the opportunity of being here. We also want to thank our patron, Apostle Asante, the youth director and the team, and all of us who are here. I believe tonight your levels are changing. Oh, I say your levels are changing. Look at somebody by you and tell the person, my level is changing. Tell the person, I'm moving to the next level. How many of you are hungry tonight? How many are you ready for the Holy Ghost to use you as never before? May you receive it in the name of Jesus. May you receive an anointing that you have never encountered before. 
that after here, just as David, after several thousands of soldiers waited for 40 days and they couldn't make it, but David within some few hours, by the reason of the Holy Ghost, was able to do it. From here and after here, you make an impact as never before. You'll be better than your family. You'll be better than your friends. Because we are receiving the supernatural. God is taking us from one level to another level tonight. And I believe that by the time we are done, something, 2023, I believe and I know, even in the physical, the president of Ghana has a bigger budget this year than last year. And I can promise you, 100% promise you, that God's budget for you, 2023, both spiritually and physically. Oh. His budget for you this year is bigger and bigger than last year. Something will happen in 2023. I can feel it. So we are dealing with, as he said, the baptism and the infilling of the Holy Spirit and then breaking free from addiction. And I want us to look some, at some scriptures here. We are looking at Matthew chapter 3, the verse 11. Matthew chapter 3, the verse 11. Matthew 3, the verse 11. baptize you with water for repentance but after me comes one who is more powerful than I whose sandals I am not worthy to carry he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit in other words he will fill you with his spirit and then the spirit will bring fire Then we move on to John chapter 20, 21. John chapter 20, 21. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. So from here, God is sending all of us. Oh, I said from here, God is sending us to the field, to your local, to your district, and to your area to make an impact. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Tonight, we are going to receive it. Then let's go to the big one, as our chairman will always say, Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. We are taking from 4. On one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. Then, verse 5, he referred to John's statement from the Matthew 3, the 11 that we read. Jesus now referred to that one in Acts chapter 1, the verse 5. He said, for John baptized you with water, but in a few days' time, in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then he comes to eight, but you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem. Now, underline this one very critically because you see that here Jesus is bringing a global focus to make an impact. So he was telling the disciples that as you receive the Holy Spirit and you encounter the Holy Spirit, who use me or who worked with me? You will be my witness in Jerusalem and then in all Judea and then Samaria and to the ends of the world. So you see that Jesus is moving them from one level to another level from Jerusalem. When we finish with Jerusalem, I'm moving you to Judea. From Judea, I'm moving you to Samaria and from Samaria to the ends of the world. Tonight, we are here that God will move us from one level to another level to another level to another level. Amen. Then we come to the chapter 2, 
the verse 4. All of them were filled. All of them in this auditorium were filled. All of them were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So all of them were filled. All of them. Say all of us. So everybody has his own Holy Spirit. Then the Holy Spirit gave them the enablement to speak in tongues. Make it Masayana. So, just as Jesus made the greatest impact during his earthly time, and then when he finished with the Holy Spirit, with the help of the Holy Spirit, then as he was about to leave, he now prepares his disciples and instructed them to wait because of the global focus he was giving to them. He was now telling them that you can't take the word unless and until you receive a supernatural being, a divine personality to be with you. So also as the future leaders of our generation gathered here, how many of you believe you are the future leaders of our generation? For us to make impact, we must be prepared and ready to receive God's power so that when the current leadership is not there, we shall be around. Oh. I say when the current leadership is not there, it shall be our turn. If you look into scripture from the Old Testament to the New Testament, you will see people who have made impact. And even in our world. So in the Bible, you can find Abraham, Moses, David, and go to Paul in the New Testament, and then Jesus and all others who made impact, tremendous, amazing impact. Differences in their careers. And then I believe that since others have made it, and then even our church, we see our fathers who have made impact in the church, and even globally, in the secular way, even as we heard some in the morning. It is now our time also to reposition ourselves so that we also here can make our own impact. If my father made an impact, I can't boast in my father's impact, but it is time for me also to reposition myself. That the same Holy Spirit who used Jesus and the disciples and other ones who also used me to even do greater and better than my father. I believe that I must do better and greater than my father and my mother. And I prophesy the same thing upon your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. I always say that, you see, the current leadership, with time, there will be no more. So if you look at these people here, very soon, or with time, there will not be more, any more there. You go to an office, and then you see somebody in the office there, you must understand that that person at the bank there, or at the hospital there, or that, de that department, department there, will never be there forever. But my question is, who is ready? Ask your friend, who is ready? Ask your friend, are you ready? Because you see, as we sit here, there are amazing things, amazing future God has wired in our system. That somebody seated by you is somebody tomorrow. Oh. So, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the 9 going, I like that scripture. However, as it is written, no eyes have seen and no ears has heard. No man conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. But he continues the turn, but God has revealed it to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Amen. The spirit searches all things. And I always say that I believe when God was planning for your life and my life for the future, 
the three, that is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, decided and planned your destiny. And that great destiny that has been wired in you, which you don't even understand and you don't even know. God has given that destiny file to the Holy Spirit. Oh. No eyes has seen. And then yes. And I always say that God even, I believe that in heaven, God even didn't allow any angel to come around when he was planning for you and planning for me. So that nobody will hear and understand what God is planning and has planned for you and I. But when you come down, he said, the spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. In other words, when they stray, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they finish planning. And now Jesus comes down to fulfill the agenda of salvation and bring us back to God's plan. And then when we were brought back to God's plan, now when Jesus goes back to heaven and then allow the Holy Spirit also to come and continue the job. Now is the dispensation of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And therefore there is no way it is impossible. That's why the Bible says that apart from me, you can do nothing. In other words, there is no way a Christian, you can make it in life without the help of the Holy Spirit. You can never fulfill your destiny and your purpose without him. It is it's not possible. So the Holy Spirit holds our destiny fire. So when Jesus was speaking and was going... In John chapter 14, the verse 6, Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit, he will send the counselor. And I'll ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. We have a friend. I say we have a divine friend. He will bring you a counselor. That word the advocate means that somebody call along the way to help. So for instance, you are walking into your destiny. But as you were going, you don't even know where you are going. Can I get two people here to stand here? Just two, two men. Just be here for me. Two, two people. Yes, so these people, this man is born again now. Now, he's walking towards his destiny, but he doesn't know the details of the destiny. What God has called him to become till he's taken back to heaven. But all these plans, no eyes have seen or ears heard. But every agenda and plan and purposes of God has been handed over to the Holy Spirit. So Jesus now says that as I'm going, I'm going to bring you another counselor, another helper, another divine friend. When he comes, he's somebody, the meaning of that one is parakratos. The parakratos simply means somebody called along the way, alongside to come and help. So the Holy Spirit has been brought alongside this man's journey. So as he moves towards his destiny, the woman to marry, the work to do, whatever he's going to do, he doesn't have the detail, he doesn't even know. Then God brings the Holy Spirit to hold his hand. Can you hold his hand for me? Maka satire. So he's now taking him towards his destiny. So the Holy Spirit, Parakratos, somebody called along the way to come and show him the way and move him from one step to another step, one step to another step, one step to another. Why? He was in the meeting. Oh, la 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 la. He was together in the meeting. So he understands and he knows. He searches the deep things of God. So he knows everything about everybody here. That is why when you have him, you are 100% sure of your destiny. After this conference, the Holy Spirit will take our hands. And we shall allow him to take our hands. Because when he leads, ah, there is no way we shall turn to the left or to the right. Because, you see, as I said, 
You see, somebody, the mystery of the whole thing is that somebody may be sitting by you here, but you don't even know the future of that person. No eyes have seen. So maybe the next president or the next chairman or the next apostle or... or Mandoko Sedebayanda. The next manager and the CEO, the next Tobinko, the next Sumilayom. Ma, 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 ma. Because you know, God knows that Zoom Lion will not be there forever. Tobinko will not be there forever. So he has to bring other people also alongside. And then maybe that person is sitting by you here. But because you don't even know, you look at the person just like that. You handle him just like that. You talk to him anyhow. You look at him anyhow. Uh oh. But that person when his time comes the moment the Holy Spirit takes that person's life he will take him from one level. You see these steps from that step over there, over there, over there, over there. Uh oh. So the baptism with in or by the Holy Spirit was an event that John the Baptist foretold. And then Jesus also promised them in the act as we read. And even Peter and Paul referred to. So if you read the act, you see Peter and Paul also referring to it. And historically, it took place on the day of Pentecost. When the risen and glorified Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to the disciples to unite them into the church, into the body of the church. Usually, the evidence of being sure that you have another friend, another paracratos, another friend with you, somebody by you, a divine personality, is the evidence of speaking the konde kede ba anda, sonde kede ba la ba okote kabaya, yeke to so de inta, mada unkoto kadende, so that gives you the evidence that now I've entered into the supernatural. Tonight is the supernatural hour. So when he comes and baptizes you with his power, the divine language, and supplies you, so the Bible says, and you were filled with the Holy Spirit, and then he enabled them to speak in other tongues. We have some benefit when he comes to help us. One is edification when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Number two, he helps us to pray effectively and appropriately. Number three, he brings spiritual strength and power. He brings edification. He helps us to pray effectively and appropriately. And then spiritual strength and power. And then also, we pray according to God's will. Now, the impact of the Holy Spirit in the lives of a Christian is very, very important, as I've already said. Because it allows you now to walk and operate in the supernatural. So, you are in Ghana here, you are in Kumasi, or you are in that village, but you are walking in the supernatural. It is a mystery. But I'm praying that tonight you understand. So being baptized in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, is an entrance or an entry to the reality of Christ through the influence of the Holy Spirit. Baptism with the Holy Spirit is an empowering experience. May you receive that experience tonight. Amen. Equipping spirit-filled believers for witness and then ministry. So the baptism in the Holy Spirit is not just an anointing, a feeling, or an emotion, emotional experience. It is an absolute, life-changing, miracle, 
and a spiritual revolution. Your life will change tonight. Your life will change tonight. Now, if you look at Ephesians chapter 5, the 18, he said, do not get drunk get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. So the word feeling, in feeling, denotes the pouring of something into another. May you tonight be open up. May you open up so that God can pour. So I've been saying that if you have a car and you drive the car for a long distance, as a driver, you'll be watching your gauge to understand whether you have enough fuel to take you to that distance. You are traveling from Accra to Kumasi or to Tamale. So part of the journey, you need to just be checking your gauge. And you realize that any time the, gauge, the fuel gauge was coming down, you needed to go to any nearby fuel station to refill, to make sure that you have enough fuel to take you to the final destination. So the Holy Spirit in our lives becomes the vehicle, Marka Sotaya. He becomes the divine vehicle who takes our lives and moves us towards our destiny. But as we move along with him, there is a need for us when we realize that our gauge is running down. We need to run quickly and say, hey, I need a feeling. I need a feeling. And this infilling comes through the study of the word, fasting and prayers, living a holy life and witnessing. As we do those things that allow the Holy Spirit to continue to fail, usually we come to God. Use me. And he pours in upon us. But as we go back, we sit down and get dry. But tonight and after this time, as we are being released, we are going to work. God is a prophet making God. He doesn't give things for free. So you can't receive the oil of the Holy Spirit. You can't receive the power of the Holy Spirit and then go on holiday. No. If you leave from here, your local must hear about you. Huh. They must hear that you came to PCC. And you are coming to make an impact in the local. Not that you just go back and then things are just the same. No. Look at your friend and say no. no. Tell another one no. no. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit must take us with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And as I've said, we need to maintain it. You realize that from the scripture, we can say that the Holy Ghost baptism is a marriage experience between a man, a typically believer, and God. The Holy Spirit baptism and the infant is like a marriage experience where divinity now comes into contact with humanity and there is a marriage union. So now you are married to somebody. Somebody has you. You belong to somebody. Tell your friend, I belong to the Holy Spirit. So when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, we become even more effective Christians, full of power, wisdom, and having partnership with God that delivers results. My prayer is that from here, wherever they place you, you deliver results. Oh. I say, wherever they place you, you deliver results. You don't need to be there for 10 years before you deliver results. If you go there three months, six months, you must begin to deliver results. How many days did God use to create the world? Six. And if we allow the same God to move, there are certain things God can do in our lives that will shock people. And that is the level we are praying for. 
So if you continue to look at the Acts 1 and then the 8, there is something spectacular that happens when the Holy Spirit comes over a person or bruise over a thing. New things are formed. Things are repaired, properly positioned. So we are believing that tonight God will position us. New things will be formed in us. The character of Christ will be formed in us. Mamma, I'm a wanna succumb. Oh, I'm a wanna Tonight, God is going to prepare us. You realize that people are thirsty over there. Our friends are thirsty. Our families are thirsty. The community people in the community are thirsty. And they are yearning for something. And that is why we are here. So that God will fill us with something. That as we go, it's a reverse of living waters. Makata nanana. So that through you, the woman told Jesus, I won't give you this water. Jesus, oh, you are joking. This one, you go and then you finish it. You pour it into the drum and it will finish just now. But I have something inside. When you receive that one, it's an everlasting one. That is why when you open up and you begin to pray, you see that the living waters keep on coming. It's just flowing. Anytime the living water is working, something is happening. And it will happen today. I said it will happen today. Now how do we receive the Holy Spirit? Or the Holy Spirit baptism and in the infilling. Number one, we must accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. The media, can you be projecting the things? You, you must accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. No man can be baptized in the Spirit of Christ or receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit who does not believe in the Lord Jesus. The indwelling is Christ sending the Holy Spirit to bear witness. That we are his children. Number two, we must be ready and believe to receive. Can I see a hand here? If you are here, you are not baptized in the Holy Spirit. Then my job is even done. I want to see a hand. If you are not baptized in the Holy Spirit, where you, you are not praying in tongues, you can't pray in tongues or you don't pray in tongues. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Thank you. God bless you. When the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, there are certain things that he does. So we are not saying he just comes only for us to just pray in tongues. But some of the things that he does, number one, he helps us to see Jesus better. Can I have a better amen? Amen. When the Holy Ghost comes, I say he will help us to know and see Jesus better. Hmm. So if you come to Revelation chapter 4, the verse 2, he said, At once I was in the spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven, and with someone sitting on it. Now if you read the whole thing, and you go back from the, from the chapter 1, to those places, you realize that John says that I was in the spirit. Tonight we are in the spirit. Then he said, then I saw someone sitting on the throne. And other places you realize that John said, when I saw him, I fell down. 
because when I saw this man, he was different from he was different from the one I knew at Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, the same John had worked with Jesus Christ. They have ate together. They have gone to crusade together. They have sat down in conference meeting together. They have done many things together. And Jesus probably was wearing some gown and some simple standards. So John knew Jesus in the physical. But now he said, I was in the spirit. As we are in the spirit, we shall know Jesus better. So now the spirit helps John. And then John now sees on the throne somebody seated there. When he saw the person, he fell. Why wouldn't you fail? Why wouldn't you fall? When you see somebody and the eyes are like fire, souls are coming from the mouth, and the voice is like a trumpet sound. The same Jesus he knew in Jerusalem, now when he saw him, he said, Ah, you see the same Jesus who were working on Jerusalem? He, the glorifies Father. Now, I've seen the same Jesus as God. My prayer is that God from today will take us to another dimension in the spirit where we walk on earth, but we can see Jesus as he is. That is why when you don't know somebody well, you can't know him very well. Amen. The next thing that the Holy Spirit does in our lives is that he makes it so important. We become more important than anybody. So it doesn't matter who you are here. I want you to understand that because of the Holy Spirit, you are more important. Oh. You are better. As a matter of fact, you are better and better. Do you know why? You know, when you come to Ghana, for instance, the most important personality in our land is the, first, uh, the, the president. So they call him the wife, the first lady, and then he'll be the, the first gentleman of the nation. Now, this personality, the nation will build a place for him called Jubilee House, and they will spend a lot of dollars and put many things into the house there just for one person because of his importance. There will be clinic in the house, there will be cooking place, there will be security, there will be so many apartment offices and many things, which in the normal sense, on the ordinary, you will not have in any house because of the personality there. And we place this person over there. Now, assuming this important person leaves that house and then comes to your village in your mad house, which is leaking, and then he comes and says that today I want to sleep and eat in this your bowl and sleep in your bedroom. The whole Ghana media will come there. And CNN will pick it that the president of Ghana has gone to Nkwanta, the village at Nkwanta called Kiri. And in that village, the president of Ghana is going to eat there and sleep there. Everybody will move from Accra and move from everywhere, even BBC, and then take that picture there because of the importance of the person who has gone there. Now, let me tell you, because of the president going to that village, that... Pe- oh, 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 oh. That person, that house, no matter how ugly that house is, and no matter who you are, whether you have gone to school or you have never gone to school before, because of the personality who has come to your house that day and sleeping and staying in your house, you become the most important person in the land of Ghana. All attention is put on you. Now, can I let you know, if the president of Ghana or the president of the United States or the, the White House it's the most important place and it's the most expensive place. Then let me show you something in the Bible. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, the 19 verse says that we and you and I, we are the temple of the living God. Maya. So now, listen. Now, God and Nanandu, the president of Ghana, who is the most important person? Who is the most powerful person? Who is the most richest person? Who is the most glorious person? Now, if this God if this God now comes to dwell in you then you become the most important temple and the most important 
expensive house and palace more than the Jubilee house, more than the White House. Why? Because of the personality in you. Christ in you. Uh, I said Christ in somebody. And then Christ in you, the only hope. Put your hands together for the master. Makatoma Sendalaya. Can you lift your hands and begin to pray? Labakote Pasanda. We give you glory. We give you thanks. Holy Ghost, we give you thanks. We thank you. We thank you for your presence in our life tonight. Makonso de Bea. You, oh God, we welcome you. Welcome you tonight. Madon de Kedemba. Blasco to the Hende. Eyaldenko Lobosinde. Raka Patanda Labo. Ikitonde Badende. Broske Piende. Rakatamado do de dende, in katabasonde, rakatoma dende, rambosende babasonde, mande kadamba. Show us thy glory, O oh. ah. Show us thy glory. Oh, my God. 
to make room for him so that in that room only the two of us I will make room for two you and I Jesus ah, you are all the matters you are all Only two. You and I. 2023. You are all the mountain. You are all the mountain. Now listen. Now listen. Listen. When the Holy Spirit comes, is that He doesn't only cause you to see Jesus, and He doesn't also make you the most important. Because I've told you just now that. If he comes into us, no matter our background, he changes everything. Now, just imagine, you just look at, let me give you a, a, a simple illustration. Just look at a, a very tall story building, unpainted. And then an ugly kiosk, painted very beautifully. Because the other one, no matter the size, and it's unpainted, and the other one, even though it's ugly, has been painted. The one that is painted, no matter where you pass, is attractive. No matter who you are here, the Holy Ghost is taking over our lives. And no matter where we are, even in the village, inside the bush, because of his presence in our lives, we shall be attractive. We shall be head of, and we shall be seen. We shall be attractive to the eye. May you receive that freshness. Then the Holy Spirit also in our lives calls us into ministry and to purpose. So the other day they were praying, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit said, separate John and Barnabas for me. As I was coming, I was asking the Holy Spirit, what do I tell them? He said, there are some people I'm going to separate and select them. There are some people I'm going to select them for unto greater things. There are some people I have covenant with them for the future. And I believe it is you tonight. My prayer is that God will make selection tonight. God will appoint some to be evangelists, some to be pastors, some to be prophets, some to be apostles, some to be CEOs. Receive that oil tonight. The Holy Spirit is bringing it. He calls us and tells us what to do. 
Now, I was a young man. I didn't know what I was going to do in the future because I had about four things to do. One day, I slept. Then the Holy Spirit came to me. And I saw myself on the street. And I saw a drum of water. And on the street, people, the, the earth was being destroyed. And people were running from left to right. And I was standing in the middle of the, the street. And I saw this drum with water. So anybody who passes there, I ask you, do you want to give your life to Jesus? The person says yes. I pick the person and soak the person in the water. When I wake up, the Holy Spirit says, I've called you. Tonight, after this meeting, you shall hear your future clear. I said, your ears will be open to your future clear. So that you don't miss your way. Hmm. Tell your friend, I will not miss my way because of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit also calls us and empowers us to witness. I'm powering you to witness. So, from here, when you go, make sure because of you, you move your local from 10 to 20. Yes. Anybody you meet, preach to the person. You go to the barbarian saloon or the saloon for your hair, preach to them. I went to a saloon where somebody, the guy who was trimming my head was watching the TV and then condemned one pastor on the TV. He said, all these things, I don't believe in miracles. And I said, ah, you was this small boy, you don't believe in miracles. Why? So all pastors are liars. I said, okay. So he doesn't even believe in God. I said, you, this, fian, fian, you don't believe in God. Then I took him from that angle and I preached him within some 15 minutes. He started weeping. And I asked him to receive Christ. And then he accepted Jesus. So everywhere you meet somebody, preach the gospel. The more you preach, and then you make sure the oil is finished, when you come, God will fill you again. Because you can't come to God when the oil is full, and you say, feed me, where is he going to pour it? So ask your friend, are you empty? Are you dry tonight? If you are dry and you're empty, then you'll receive a top-up. But if you are full, if you are full, <laughs> if you are already full, you need another one. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the thirsty of my soul. Bread of heaven. Tonight is a prayer night. Bread of heaven. soaking in prayer. Mm. Everything we are doing is by the word and prayer. Yes. Now the Holy Spirit, one of his agenda is to make sure 
He guides you to all things. Say all things. All, all things. things. And one of the areas you must allow him to guide you to is your marriage. You see, when God made Adam, God made Eve from Adam, for Adam. So God knows who you are supposed to marry. So if you're a Christian and you're a man or a woman here, I can 100% and confidently tell you that God has somebody called to your name. And the moment you are called James and you marry Mary, what's it? <laughs> and the moment you think, the moment you don't get the correct one, trouble starts. All the days of your life. Marriage can unmake your destiny. So I can tell you, any, I, I, I went to a place and then somebody, I was working for a young man, and then he said, I've, I'm working with somebody and we have worked for six years. And I asked him, when are you going to marry? He said, I don't even know the date. And I asked the person, I said, did you pray about the marriage? He said, oh, no. And you're working with the person for six years. And I asked him, do you think you have never done the thing? Then he was laughing. And six years, you don't, you are not even sure, and you are still working with the person. In the morning, we were told. Now, let me tell you, one of the areas as youth, you must intentionally be intentional and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you straight to get it correct. It's your marriage life. Why? Because, you see, let me tell you something. The reason is that, those of you standing, you can sit down. The reason is that God doesn't want us to make any mistake. And then God doesn't want us to go and try and come back. Because when you enter into marriage, you can't come back and change it. And then let me tell you the, the most important thing. Because of your destiny, and then the calling that God has for you in the future, he has specifically and strategically placed somebody in your life. So if you miss that person, you miss the way of God. And the plans and the agenda of God for your life can never be fulfilled because you have lost the key. The helper in your life. You have already lost. Why that? So I'm praying that from here, you now understand why I'm telling you the Holy Spirit is our destiny helper. So everything God has for you is in his hand. No eyes have seen. He has heard. But he has it. I'm telling you from experience. Yes. Let me tell you something. When I was going to marry, say, hey, Listen, I, I'm still talking about the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit is my best friend. We can pass everywhere, even in the farm. Listen. Listen. I was a deacon by then. And then, listen. And God has told me in future, you'll be a pastor. It means this future, I can't joke with it. I'm serious. You may be here, you don't know, or you know what God has told you you are going to become. Then, I came to the Holy Spirit and said, ah, if that is the case, then Holy Spirit, I want to fast for three days. He said, okay, let's start. I start the first day. The very first day I start, after I have prayed, by 10 a.m., my wife came. (laughs) 
listen listen are, are we together from here your husband will come from here the holy spirit will show you your wife in the awesome name of jesus this conference is a conference of next level where everything is changing from you god is taking full control and command of your life i'm serious by 10 o'clock in the first day of the fasting this girl comes into my office <laughs> Listen, listen. We are going to pray. Listen. <laughs> uh, you you want your wife to come, eh? She's on the way coming. Then as we met at that morning. Listen. I was looking for a sign. Now, we met at 10 in the morning and we spoke to 2 p.m. <laughs> then, listen, listen. Listen. Then I went home. By 6 p.m., as I was crossing the fast, I was lying down on the bench, a uh, deacon. I was lying down on the bench trying to break, break the fast. And as I was lying down, the Holy Spirit said, That is your wife. And I was, I was having three days fasting. The first day fasting, when my wife came, I stopped the rest of the fasting. <laughs> I pray for you today that the Holy Ghost will lead you to your destiny. Oh, oh. I want you to open your mouth and pray. Say, hey, Holy Spirit, come to my life. Show me my way. Makanda Basonde. Show me, open my eyes, Lake Abasunde. Open my eyes, draw me closer to yourself. Let me walk in your path. Let me walk in your direction. That I will not miss my way, Holy Ghost. I will not miss my way. Speak to me and show me what to do. Show me my wife. Show me my husband. Show me my destiny. For my destiny file is with you. You are my destiny holder. Bakande Mando kasinde lebi onko badanda raka pato dende di masunde reendo kabadon si di ende babo rande babasu katun ke leba ando rento kabanso la babo kabayanda basonde e kabanda bando bosenda rakando kubole masanda bayanda manka da badobo lebi ante broski biende Manso do bayende bra enko toda madenda do bobo rakata madonde rebebebebebe 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 Rebecca, 
To him, lift your hands to Jesus. For fresh oil, fresh oil, oh, fresh power, fresh power, Jesus. fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit, fresh infilling of the Holy Ghost. That from here, from here, listen, listen, listen. That from here, from here, we want to be soaked in the Spirit to the stand that from here, wherever you pass, mm. even your dress, yes. your shoe, yes, Jesus. Lord. Even your trousers. Yes, Lord. Everything will be soaked up. Jesus. Jesus. Thank <laughs> you. 
you are here, you are not praying in the Holy Ghost. We want you to come forward here. We want to pray with you. You have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit. The essence of this program, two nights, is to soak in the Spirit. We want you to come forward here. Quickly run to the front here. Run to the front here. And receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Whatever you are, you are the baptist. <laughs> Whatever you are, run, run and lift your hands to him tonight. It's the night of baptism of the Holy Spirit. Come, run and come quickly. standing here, I want you to close your eyes and listen to me carefully. The Holy Spirit I'm talking about, he's already here. Just listen and follow this instruction. Very simple. We are not going to waste time at all. It is his desire. He said, the gift that my father promised. And he's still giving the gift tonight. Yes. If you are in Pentecost, Pentecost must be inside you. Praise God. Now, listen to me very carefully. Those of you stand, standing here, all you need to do is just to believe. Believe. Believe that I'm going to pray a simple prayer. And after the simple prayer, we are bouncing to prayer. And those of us standing there, we shall stretch our hands towards them. And those of you standing in front of me here, coming to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is already coming in you. He's coming. And as soon as he comes, he comes with divine language. Yes, Lord. And that language is what you call the tongues. Mm. He is going to enable you to speak. Allah. All what I need from you to do is that after we have finished praying for you, I just want you to open your mouth and pray. Yes, and pray in tongues, not in English, and not in Chi, and not in Gan. Mm. After I have prayed for you, the Holy Ghost has already taken over. Yes, All you need by faith is to just to open your mouth and speak in tongues as the Spirit enables you. Yes, so the Holy Spirit is here. Mm. And I want you to desire him. I want you to have faith mm. that tonight, not leaving, you are not going to back to your seat mm -hmm. unless you are baptized with the Holy Ghost. So that this conference, you will know that you have been impacted by the Holy Ghost and that through him, your destiny is secured. Now, can you lift your hands to me? Can you lift your hands to Jesus? Can you lift your hands to him? Shemima, Mahusun, Shemima. Oh, tonight. So, 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 I want 
you to desire him. I want you to desire him. I want you to be ready. I want you to be ready. I want you to be on fire. That your heart is ready. Your mind is ready. Your tongue is ready. Say. Lift your hands. I'm praying for you. And close your eyes. I finish as I finish praying. We are all praying together. And I don't want you to pray in any tongues, any language again. Just open your mouth and speak in tongues because as I prayed for you, he has come. Just lift your hands. Holy Ghost, I want to thank you. Because you are already here. Tonight is your night. And these are your children. Release your fire upon them. Touch their lips, Lord. Give them the enablement and power. And give them the supernatural language now. Receive it. Receive, receive it. Begin to pray. 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 Ah, 
have received it. Your friends have received it. Just open yourself so that you also receive yours. 
hands those of you who have received it hold your friends hands hold your friends hands hold it hold it hold it hold it hold it hold your friends hands I want to pray for you so that we can count you we want to count you but hold your friends hand as I want to pray for you and lift the hands up lift the hands up now now lift the hands up your friends are lift it up and receive a touch of the Holy Ghost. Receive a touch of the Holy Ghost now into your life now. Receive him now into your life in the name of Jesus. Receive a touch. Receive him now. Receive him. Receive fire of the Holy Ghost. Receive the fire now. Receive the fire and the giftings of the Holy Spirit. Receive the giftings. Receive the giftings. Receive the giftings of the Holy Spirit. Receive the giftings of the Holy Spirit. Receive the touch of the Holy Spirit. Father, we want to thank you. We want to bless you for confirmation and manifestation of your presence, Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Thank you for touching their lips. Yes, Lord. And thank you for supplying the supernatural language tonight. Thank you for baptizing them into the church, Lord. Yes, Lord. And thank you for filling them with your presence. Mm. We want to come to you quickly. Can we count them quickly before they sit down? Can we count them quickly? Yes, those who have been baptized. Put your hands down. Put your hands down. Yeah, they are the, those who came forward. Those who came forward. So count them from the other side. Sorry. Yes, those who have been baptized. They, they are the ones we are counting. Those who have received the Holy Ghost baptism. So count them from there. No, leave your friends hands. Leave your friends hands. We are counting so that we go and sit down. Hurry up. Yeah. All of you, I saw you praying in tongues. Yes, count them quickly. Count them quickly. All those who were here who were speaking in tongues. them with praying tongues. Can you follow them so that they can count? They count you, then you go and sit down. Pass this way. Yes. All of you who were here and those of you who came forward you received the baptism. Yes. They count you, there, then you go, you go and take your seat. Those who have received. Those of you who were praying in tongues. Up, they count you, then you go. Then we'll pay for the rest. Those of you who have already received it. Now, now, just keep quiet. Lift your hands to him. Lift it to the Holy Spirit. 
allow yourself. Your friends have received him. They are speaking in tongues. You are also taking yours just now. Just open your mouth. I've prayed for you. Just open your mouth and speak in tongues. The Holy Spirit has already come into you. Just open your mouth. Believe and speak in tongues. You speak in tongues. Just open your mouth. The Holy Ghost has come. The Holy Ghost has come. Just receive him. Receive him. Open your mouth. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Don't close your mouth. Open it. Open your mouth. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth. 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 Now. Now. Receive him. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Reke baba ba son de reba baba yanda raba ba. Rebe be 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 be. Rebe be 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 be. Rebe be 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 be. Rebe be 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 be. Receive him. Receive him. Receive him. Receive him. 